she is huge. Hi. It's just on your expense. <laughs> She's like, thanks, Sandy. I got my Sandy canceling headphones I on. I know you do. Sorry, ladies. I knew this was gonna take a while. Don't eat my hair. Don't eat my hair. Jess is actually due for surgery again. <laughs> morning guys we are headed to town this morning with my trailer i uh, got a text last night late from the machinist in town that's making my new water gates and he said he has one done and he wants me to take it home and check it out just to make sure it works and i'm like that's a really good idea before you make eight of them so uh instead of calling him back i'm just gonna run in with my trailer uh none of our trucks are long enough none of the truck beds are long enough to fit a gate so I, I said to Mark, well, I'll hook up the trailer because we have to take lambs this afternoon anyway. And he goes, oh, that's a good idea. Well, I came out to do it this morning. Everything is so frozen that uh, there's a little set screw that holds the handle of my jack to crank up the jack. It snapped right off. So the jack wouldn't lift. So Mark's been out there helping me <laughs> fix that as usual. And uh, yeah, so we got it fixed and everything's functional. So I'm just heading here to town and see how this gate looks i'm very excited so after all that we actually didn't need the trailer because he just wanted to show me the gate not take the gate with me while i was in there i got a text from chris saying the back of my ulam pen i split them up yesterday the back pen is underwater because uh the line was froze yesterday and it thawed and it blew a pipe so i'm gonna run into rona here our hardware store i'm gonna get some new joiners and i'm gonna redo the plumbing today because it's only supposed to get colder and i'm not around friday in case this happens again It's looking like the very end water bowl uh, where it comes down into it. It looks like it, it's the thing that cracked. If I had my guess, I'll double check with Carissa. So all the water to the whole barn is off right now, so I gotta kind of work fast. Um, I'd like to get rid of all these taps, but I'm wondering if I should just work on that end today, get the water going. I was able to move all the ewes in this pen. Thank goodness I have this whole side. It's really only wet to the feeder. So all this is dry. And then I put the ones that I'm shipping just in the front. I like to get them fed some water before they go though. Even though they've had water all morning up to just 15 minutes ago. So after all that rigmarole up there, it ended up not being that. It was right here. There was no, there was no gear clamp here. <laughs> Can you believe it? So I had a spare one. It's on here. I'm gonna run to the shop and get one more. I like having two on these, but the water was just shooting out here. So I don't know if there was one here and it rotted off 
but we always put gear clamps here. So I don't know what happened, but that's all it was after all that. But we maybe bought some more time with that elbow anyway. Thankfully, uh, it's pretty cold outside. Uh, so hopefully in the next week or so, we can get this barn cleaned out. I have to get it. I have to get it cleaned out before we wean those lambs and bring them over here because that's two water leaks on both sides. This side's actually dried up. So if you leave it long enough, it does dry up, but not ideal. I don't want them to start with that kind of gross litter. And this one's going to take a bit, I would imagine. So these ewe lambs are loaded up. Uh, yeah, the weights on these, this is not my typical group that I'm sending. So I'm thinking if the buyers are knowing I'm coming, they're gonna be like, what do we have here, young lady? So they're not gonna be overly impressed. I'm never the top of the market anyway, so I'm usually happy with an average price. What is going on with the seat? There we go, I have too many layers on. I I think last week the market was down a bit, so we'll see what it's doing this week. I haven't actually checked my app. I could do that real quick. Uh, so in Ontario, we have different sales barns. One is Monday, uh, one is Tuesday, and the one I go to is actually tomorrow. Today is Wednesday. One of the bigger ones is in Kitchener. So I'm just gonna check its price from yesterday. So January 31st looks like, oh, I don't even know how big these guys are. I forgot to get a weight on them i would say i'm probably in the 80 to 94 pound range and yesterday they were actually up yesterday 247 okay 89 pound lambs were 247.83 Prices have been depressed, but regardless, I'm kind of glad that I'm freeing up some room in there just with that water leak. Uh, they're high and dry right now, which is good. So I did talk to Mark at lunch and I said, what are we gonna do about this manure situation? Because I gotta clean that barn all out. I have a manure pile just outside the door over there and I gotta clean this barn all out. He said, we will work on it. Just don't you fret. <laughs> so anyways i fret that is my duty i'm really good at fretting well on today's episode of things sandy almost forgot to do i have to vaccinate not really vaccinate give my antitoxin to the uh the last three bottle babies here and this is just prevent any clostridial issues that may happen with just the change in the diet me weaning them here a couple days ago and then them just going straight on to the grain and stuff i just like to Basically anytime there's a, cha a big change, when they're in this barn, I like to give them this. The ones that haven't been with mom. They're having a nice little siesta, they're gonna hate me. And I'm just gonna throw it on my gallery here. Okay. I usually spray paint their backs, but I'm pretty sure I can keep track of three, hopefully. Come here. Look at that big belly. Look at that big belly. Oh. Look how big you are. Look how, she is huge. Hi. Oh, hi. Hi. Oh, hi. Oh, oh you don't hate me? Oh. Hi. All right, who's next? You know what? Okay. Yep. That's good. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. Let's put you on your bum. Yep. On your bum. Okay. Okay.
again. Let's go. Perfect. Well, it's a good thing I'm super paranoid about this water over here because I, uh, I came over to check and everything is still good. No leaks, everything's working. But I forgot to plug back in a heat cord for this water bowl. So tonight is supposed to get cold again. And these need to keep working. Hey kids. The only other thing I'm a little concerned about is that Carissa had to turn off the water this morning while I was in town. So I'm just making sure that you guys had water. I think see, she smashed it for you, but I think you could use some more. Hey, look at the sunshine. Yeah, so frozen. Would you like a tapioffee? Good morning, you guys. We are vaccinating our group that we just hooked from, that I just hooked from the other day. Uh, Chris is here. She's going to try not to fall asleep. <laughs> She's fighting a cold. And the last time Michael was here, um, people had a good time watching you in the background, pretty sleepy. Now, full disclosure, she had a big weekend prior to Michael. And I said, you're going to pay for this, whether it's today, that was a Monday, or Wednesday when Michael was here. And it was, it was Wednesday. Yeah. She was also on morning milkings that week. So I am not taking responsibility <laughs> for boring her. She was actually just trying not to fall asleep. I showed Jess, eh? And she was like, I know exactly how she feels. Cause Jess used to work where Carissa works now, the second job, the milking job. And she goes, when I, when she had to work mornings, she, she head bobbed all day trying to stay awake. So she said, I knew exactly how Carissa felt anyway. If you didn't watch that video, even if you just watch that part, it's really quite hilarious. It's just on your expense. <laughs> She's like, thanks, Andy. We are still using Tazvax. These are the clostridial vaccines. Tazvax for the ewes that are born in 2018 or, or before that. And then 2019 and younger get the Glanvac. And the Glanvac is, we're switching to this as the, as the ewes age out because this also protects against uh, CL as well. So. Uh, one mil of this, two mils, two mils of this. And while we're at it, I'm actually going to enter their breeding data onto my flock watch. So we're kind of doing two things this morning. Are you okay doing this this morning? As you scan, basically she's going to read out to me what group uh, these ladies were bred to. And I want to put that under their information. If that's okay with you. And then just make sure... So in, squirt, out, let go. And then just make sure there's a way to So you can scan. I'm going to scan the green cord. 2018. So 2018 gets uh, Tazak. Tazak. In my 2017. 20, yeah. 2018 and before get Tazak. 2019 and later get Glanvac. And then if you. Can you put that in under activity as well when you, oh, after you're done? You've got time because i got to do this whole thing. So what I'm doing here is I don't have my rams actually in the flock watch system 
and I don't really want individual rams in it necessarily because I'm I use them as groups so I'm calling I'm saying that it is a ram I'm saying group one group two group three and that's how I will match them with mom so that's what we're doing here we're cheating the system shocker I don't know when they were born like I'm just guessing uh, I have all the ram information on my Gallagher but because it's a group, they're just a mix mesh. So let's say 2019, January 1st. Let's say they're born in 2018. Fill in breed. Ugh, okay. Um, oh no. Say. Okay, so that is all good. Oh, this is like harder. Okay, mating record. October. Ram use, group two, he's in the system. Oh, I have quick description. Um, breeding. Uh, single animal. There we go, save. There we go. This is the coolest thing, it, it shows uh, the lambing date on it, which is nice. So I finally got it to work. It took way too long. But the one thing I love about this, well, you'll see it on my phone here, but uh, it, I had to put in when I put the rams in with the ewes and it right away comes out with my estimated lambing date, which is really cool. So when Sandy always screws up and doesn't remember when she put in her rams, even though it's written down like three other places, this keeps track of it for me. Good. She's vaccinated? Yeah. Let her go. <laughs> Sorry, ladies. I knew this was going to take a while. Oh, this is painful. Well, they say the first time through is the worst. It's true. And you're gonna freeze. Okay, bye! Thank you for joining the party. Well, she should have if she looked at the bill. Yeah. Oh, darn it. This one has a mean little bend in the middle of the spot. Oh, I guess it's fine. So there is flex. That's it. We have officially picked up our floor. Much to my good friend who's a designer's dismay. We did not buy wood. We bought like a vinyl. What is this called? Vinyl? This is vinyl click flooring. Click flooring. Floating floor. We wanted something that was really waterproof because we're going to be in and out with our snow boots and our snowmobile gear and people aren't going to really pay attention to like taking off their boots all the time. So, and a dog that likes to hang out in the mud. So this is what we got. I like it. It should be installed between 65 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm. What about, so do you have it to keep... It doesn't need to it, acclimate, really. So it doesn't need to stay that warm, though? I think while I'm installing it, I'd want to keep, keep, it. Uh, keep it warm. 
Well, I was able to get a hold of Michael over lunch and uh, he, I wasn't doing anything wrong. I felt like I was. Uh, I was getting kind of frustrated there before lunch, but uh, they are gonna go ahead and uh, add it so when I wanna make a group after I've scanned all the U's. Today, if you watch me, when I ran those U's through, I kind of scanned each one and did a task on her, right? Like I, I said, she was part of a breeding group. And then um, instead of saying it was part of a group, I just marked her down individually. I wasn't sure how to group them before because I didn't wanna manhandle all those animals, like because they're in three different pens. I didn't want to have to run them all through and then all through again uh, because they were getting bred to different groups, right? So I wasn't really sure how to do it, so I just treated each U individually. I then went to the app to see if I could create a group with just all those U's that I put through this morning, and I couldn't. I was like, what am I doing wrong? And he said, you're probably not doing anything wrong. Uh, so I said, is there a filter that I could tell it that I want to group based on the activity I just did. So today's activity was like I made a breeding group um, and then I wanted all those used together because they're all part of the same lambing group. So that's really all I want to do is to group them together to say they're group two U's right now as of uh, uh, February 2nd, 2023. This is group two. And he said, uh, we will do that. I went to the house at lunch and I said to Jack, I'm like, I am technologically just an idiot. Like I can't run this stuff. I'm, I shouldn't be the one doing this. And he said, well, if they're still developing it, you're helping them. Like you're, you have to go through these things to show them like this is stuff you use. Maybe other people will use it. So the good thing about switching maybe to flock watch is that they're, they're not really in beta, but they're definitely still working on the app all the time. They have developers always improving it and they're taking my feedback and they're putting it on right away. So, um, I just, I don't want to be that person. I just, I don't like being a guinea pig because I don't think I'm smart enough to be that person. And I feel like they might watch this video and are very embarrassed for me. <laughs> I went into the house feeling pretty frustrated, but after talking to Michael, I feel a lot better. So I'm just used to them being organized in a certain way uh, based on the activity I do. That's how Gallagher does it. So I'm just used to that. Is that the only way to do it? No. Um, but my brain is having a hard time switching into this new way of doing things. And uh, it's just going to take some practice, I think. But yeah. <laughs> I think for the rest of the afternoon, um, I'm going to just make sure everything is sort of uh, hunkered down for this winter storm that's supposed to start tonight. It's not really even a storm. We're supposed to get some snow, but more than that, it's just these really cold temps. We have like two really cold days and then it's supposed to warm up. Fun. I think Mark and I decided in this barn tonight, I'm gonna come back out probably around seven or eight and actually shut the water right off to this barn. Everything's probably okay, but it's gonna get real, real cold tonight and tomorrow. And I just don't want there to be another another big leak that like there was yesterday. And uh, they don't drink overnight. They really only drink before they eat. And also these bales have so much water in them. They're baleage. So they're not jumping on the water anyway, even on a typical day. Actually, this is actually soaking in. Crazy, this was underwater yesterday. Look at that. It's actually soaking in, I'm surprised. Look at that. Huh. All right, I'm gonna check on the Golden Girls and fill their water up for the night anyway, just to make sure while we still have water here running. Um, I'm just afraid of what tomorrow morning is going to bring.
blush. How's that look? Uh, part of the reason I'm a little stressed just about this cold weather and uh, keeping stuff from freezing and just being a little more work is the fact that I'm not here tomorrow. I don't even know if I'm going to be here Saturday, hopefully. Hopefully I'll be here Saturday. Uh, Jess is actually uh, due for surgery again tomorrow. She's scheduled tomorrow, but kind of on call. So um, yeah, she had a bit of a flare up again here. Um, what she had just over a year ago, she went for surgery for it, emergency surgery for it. Serious enough this time that she uh, visited the family doctor last Tuesday, he had her in for a CT scan that day. And we had a consult on Friday with the surgeon she had last year. And she said, just come in on my first basically on call day, which is tomorrow. We haven't talked about it yet here online. I'm sort of letting Jess do that because it's her body. Yeah, last time, we were able to do it through laparoscopic. This time it's gonna be uh, a little more aggressive, I think, like she's gonna have to actually go in there and surgically remove what is ailing our sweet Jess. So uh, yeah, just keep us in your thoughts. I'm, uh, I'm definitely, now that we know what we're dealing with, it's not the stress that it was last year when um, literally until she underwent surgery, we had no, no one gave us any answers. So we kind of know what we're dealing with now. We know the devil we're dealing with and um, we're not quite as, as scared, but surgery is surgery. Going under the knife is still going under the knife. And uh, yeah, just keep us in your thoughts. Oh boy. I got my Sandy canceling headphones on. I know on. you do. All right, let's show the people what you've made so far. This is our countertop for our cupboards. We get three cupboards today? Yeah, one, two, three. Home Depot. And then this is our little kitchen, our little kitchen table. It still needs uh, polyurethane, I think, or lacquer, or whatever you want to call it. So I wish we could get a better view. And then underneath here is the big table for like the high top table. It has bar seats to it, so that's going in the kind of front entry room. And Mark built the ladder for our loft. And this is all built from the wood we had. So we just used the same stain to everything, but every piece of wood, this is ash, and it just took it a little, a little bit differently. It's a little lighter, but I love it. So yeah, Mark made a ladder. Stay right to heaven. Hey? Good talk.